Hello everyone, my name is John Paul. I recorded this webinar on February 3rd, 2012, where I discussed trading the news, using price action, and forecasts for 2012. If you'd like to join me at the next webinar event, please visit daytradetowin.com and sign up to our mailing list to be notified. I also want to share with you some really good videos on how to trade price action and understand how simple trading can really be. Enjoy. The goal is to learn when to stay out, right? Because obviously a position is not being into the market and to avoid looking at uh, conventional indicators which everyone is using, which parameter to use, which time frame to use, uh, what do I know, uh, which indicator trumps which indicator, things like that I try to stay as far away from. So the goal here is to look at the price, interpret the price, understand the, the manipulation that occurs and take it from there. Morning John. Um, so, uh, as you can see, we had this huge move here in the in the morning, right? Huge move here at 8:35 or 8:30. This is the 8:30, 8:35 candle. Now, one thing that I'm going to look at, and this is one one of the things that I teach in the in the mentorship program. I teach when to take advantage of this news event. And from what I can see, I don't want to take it long based on this news event. So if any any of you got the this number, this positive number for the unemployment report and decided to go long based on it, there is no relationship that says a positive news event will make the, the uh, price go up, a negative news event will lead to price falling. So instead, what I want to do is I want to concentrate on looking at what happened, the reaction of this news event, and then possibly taking a trade according to some specific rules. All right. So now, well, the one thing that I'm going to be looking at throughout the entire day, probably up until 3.30 Eastern Standard, is when price comes all the way back down. Remember, I'm uh, basing all my decisions on what the price and the candles tell me. Nothing else. But I'm looking for a situation as follows. I'm looking for price to come all the way down and don't think that it's not possible because it is absolutely possible that it can happen. Where price comes all the way back down and starts to trade below the low of this candle right there. When I see that occur, I know that the traders that went long based on that news event are now panicking. And they are about to hit the reverse button or they are about to get stopped out. And therefore, a, uh, a slew of orders are going to hit it in the opposite direction, pushing this market lower and beyond this here. And you probably, if you haven't seen a couple of videos out there where I, where I show you this, uh, this action in a couple of examples, recent examples, um, it absolutely can occur and it does occur. Now I'm not saying that the market's not going to rally and go up. And if it does, there's other things we can look at. We have the Atlas Line trades, we have the blueprint trades, we have the at the open, we have all this other stuff that we're looking at for longs. But this is just one specific situation that if it occurs you're going to have a short trade and the entry just so you know put some rules here up the entry is going to be two consecutive closes below the chaotic bar okay so since this was a green or bullish chaos that occurs, I'm waiting for this to come all the way back. And if it does, you have an entry. Okay. Now, if that candle was red, if this was a red chaotic candle, then I would look not to go short. I'd look to go long if and when, if this happened to be a red bar, it closes um, above the high of that 
bearish candle. So it really depends on what the reaction is. Some news events have no reaction. And by the way, this works on every market. So it's not just the E-mini S&P that I probably have on all my videos. If you look at um, economic reports that come out in Europe, you can use the same exact principles. So now, if the market continues higher, what can we do with it? Well, let me take a look here if the Atlas line. All right, so I just added the Atlas line to my chart. I have here a wave file, alert 4.wave. I have a, a little bit of a configuration here, how I want the text to display, the signals to display. I have here, it's set to 9.30 because I live in Eastern Standard Time Zone and that's what my computer clock is set to. I can turn off around the signals and everything else here you can pretty much leave defaulted unless you want to change the, the way the line looks. And we have here a long on the Atlas line which is 1335 quarter. We have one, two to go long right there. So even though I may be waiting for this short to occur, it's only a setup. It has to actually trigger. The trigger is two chaotic entries going, oops, I spelled going wrong, it is going to be two consecutive closes below this chaotic bar. And it hasn't happened yet. So what do we have here? The Atlas line telling us to go long at 1335 quarter. Frank, uh, you took that. All right, very good. Anyone else here? that has the Atlas line. Uh, Nathan, did you take that as well? Nate, Nathan Mills? All right, very good. Anyone else here that has the Atlas line saw that happen on your chart? All right, nice. Good, good job, guys. Um, John, do you have the Atlas line? John, on, uh, on your chart, did this pop up here for you? Uh, yeah, okay. All right, very good. Uh, Burrell. Uh, Burrell, I sent you an email uh, not too long ago. Um, I want you to get back in touch with me, uh, Burrell. I'll email you after, the, after this here, okay? The Atlas line starts at about 9.45. I have it set for 9.30. It takes a little bit of time for processing. So you're looking at probably a 9.45, 9.50, 10 o'clock is when the Atlas line begins to plot. Mike. So those of you who have the, the Atlas line, um, those of you who have the Atlas line all have the same entry, 1335 quarter. And the same thing if we have a, if it now starts to come down, you're going to get a short entry to go short as well. So you have a, uh, and then you have, a, I, I would believe, the best entry here if it happens, if it happens to come all the way back here, down here you can go short. All right. So looking at this ATR I am at about a point and a half so a point and a half is my recommendation 1335 quarter 1336 quarter 1336.75 yeah you got it no problem here this point and a half right there right so profit targets are always specific very specific the profit targets any questions? All right. I try to make these webinars as informal as possible. So if you do have questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. I want to show you, um, you know, what the Atlas line does. Yesterday was more of a flip flop on the Atlas line. It was very slow, as well. Usually, when the market is slow or slower there's nobody trading it's very hard to uh, 
it's very hard to make heads or tails of it. All right, excellent. Um, Sam, how do you? Sam, are you? Um, have you ever? Do you have the Atlas line, Sam? Or anything? Any other? Uh, any other method that I that I offer? ATL, okay. The way that I, the way that I um, look at the profit targets is actually looking at the current market conditions. Okay, and so even with the ATO, I recommend using this as well. You see, I have here this average true range ATR in the bottom here. This tells me with a parameter of four or five. This tells me that the last four bars give me something. It gives me the, the current market conditions. So if I look at what's happening right now, right here and now, I see the ATR right over here at 2 or uh, what is it? 2.09, right, for example. That means that if I enter the market right now, I can expect based on what occurred the last four bars for the market to move two points up or down. Okay. So if you had an atlas line entry at 13.35 quarter at about 10 o'clock here, 9.55. I look down and you can see it right here, it says 1.55, right? So that means that I don't know if the market's going to go to 10 points or 20 points or 5 points, but I can tell you based on the most current market conditions that it will at least go to a point and a half. So I want to take the guesswork out of knowing how much profit I should take or sometimes you want to trail a stop and you give it all back I know that the market based on what had just occurred can move a point and a half and that's why I'm only taking a point and a half now right now it's at two points right and so if I enter the market now I would want to go uh, for two points based on the current market conditions no more no less Sam is that clear Okay, now, most of the methods that I teach, I always use the ATR. Actually, I need to know what the ATR is in any situation, and I'll tell you why. If the market is slow, I need to understand that. And so if it's at 1 here or lower, or hovering on 1, as I say, right there, to me, it's too slow. And what you see is whenever the price can't trade 4 ticks, or more than the, than the last 20 minutes, it's just stuck in that four tick range. I want you to think about what's happening. The market's dead, there's nobody trading, it's just whipsaw, you're going to get cut up. Now the same situation occurs where if it's too volatile, if it's five or above, think of it in the same way. It's too chaotic. Uh, nobody usually has, or traders typically don't have larger than five point of a stop, and so the market will move up to their stop, stop them out, come back down. It's more chaos. And so what I want you to think about is staying within these ranges. And this works with really any market. If you look at currencies or any market, you just have to look at the extremes and stay out of the extremes and know when you should be in it and when you and know when you should not be in it. All right. Any other questions on how I know the exact profit target to take? based on the current market conditions. All right, very good. So if anything, I want you guys to look at this as an opportunity to know how much you should be going for and how much uh, and when you should not be trading. So how much profit you should be going for and when you shouldn't be trading based on the ATR. Now, with the Atlas line, um, I'm looking for pullback trades, strength trades, and so forth. Um, at the open, I don't believe we had an entry yet. Right? I think the entry is about 13.35 quarter as of right now, right? If I'm just eyeballing it.
1336, I believe, right? 1336 is the at the open entry, yeah. Okay, Alan? Very good. All right, now, um, since I have Frank and Nathan here in the room and a couple of a couple other mentorship students here, um, just a quick, I always ask you guys how you guys are doing. If you want to tell everyone how and what you learned here in the uh, in the program, just a little feedback to let everyone know since you guys did take did take it and offer your experience or share your experiences. And Frank is actually in uh, in a video. If you guys want to see what Frank looks like, he is in actually one of the one of the videos. Um, William says here, so for the ATO, we're not looking for a chaotic bar anymore. Well, it's two different things. You know, the at the open is a specific is a specific entry. The at the open move, the at the open uh, entry, is a specific entry to go long or short the market according to the rules. Um, William. The trading the news event is I'm looking for this is a news event that occurred I'm looking for it to come all the way down this is not the ATO this is a, a how to properly trade the news event so that's two different things William that I'm after Well, uh, William, just to clarify, any time throughout the day, any time throughout the day, if price ever comes, if any, if the price ever comes and closes twice below here, that is a specific entry to go short based on trading the news, news event. It has nothing to do with the at the open. The at the open method is a specific method to go and to enter long based on what's occurring right now. So any time throughout the day, uh, William, if you see price come all the way back down below the this uh, news event here, and if you haven't watched the, uh, the the videos that I have out on on how to properly trade the news or how I do it, uh, it would give you the examples in December, examples in November. I mean, there's examples everywhere where you wait for for the when it. You can see here's the the idea of the trading news. In case you're wondering. Nobody really got long here. Most traders got long here. If this does not continue higher and starts to come back down, those traders have to, they're not going to hold this. They're going to get out and it's going to fuel the market in the opposite direction. And that's why you take the opposite move if and when this occurs. So it may not occur, but if it does, you have the opportunity. Okay? William. Are you moving, Burrell? All right, very good, very good. Um, you can ask him yourself, John. Uh, what, what does Frank trade? Okay. Now, a couple of questions here. Uh, let me take a look here. How would you handle the Euro US and there was four or five big five minute candles? You only take the first one. You only take the first one, Ken, and if it comes all the way down 
past that first one on the euro, that's what you would take. Right, well, the the mentorship program really, it's a combination of everything. Okay, it's not just uh, one method, the Atlas line. Um, it's actually um, a combination of all the methods together in sequence as you move forward in time. And so at each step of the way, I want to look at what's happening now and saying, okay, I, I can see a blueprint happening. And now I'm looking to go long or short based on this blueprint. I have an atlas line that I may be looking for a um, pullback or a strength trade. I'm looking at possibly not the open chase the trade. So whatever happens first in sequence as you trade, that's what you take. It's not just one thing or another. So really it's all the methods combined, whatever is happening, that's what you take. Okay. Um, all right. So one other thing I want to I want to talk about today, besides trading the the news uh, event, which we had this huge news event. Like I said, I don't know if the market's going to come all the way back down. If it does, and don't be surprised that if it does, you have an opportunity to go short when two consecutive closes occur below that this large chaotic bar. Another thing that I want to talk about today is a, a lot of traders ask me how many contracts should I trade and I just put a a blog post on this subject last night in case you haven't read it I believe that you shouldn't regardless of how much money you have in your account I don't believe that you should just jump in with 10 contracts or 5 contracts because it says as easy as you can lose with one contract you can lose with 10 so it has no bearing on your account size Instead, I want to turn the thinking around and I want to say, why not trade, regardless of how much money you have in your account, consistently with one contract, take the loss, accept it, recover, uh, be confident with trading one contract. And once you sit there for a couple of weeks or a month or a couple of days, you can go to two and you stay at two contracts and you feel comfortable and confident that when you do lose it's not a big deal to lose uh, money on two contracts the next trade you take right away you recover you're able to get that back and you move forward you stay at two until you it's not a sweat it's not a big deal to trade two contracts the goal is for you to not make mistakes or not get out early or not um, um, you know I have three stops that I use one is a time based stop and so if you um, you know are trading with five or ten contracts and, and you're um, you know you see the market go against you by a little bit and say oh this is five or ten contracts it's going against me for a little bit boom and you get out of the market and the market turns around and goes in your favor then you say ah, I should have followed the rules so the idea is to stay consistent at each step one contract, two contracts by following the rules and not to get out early, get out too soon, uh, to you know uh, panic that the idea is to completely get away from uh, doing those mistakes, making those mistakes all right All right, so I see here setting up a possible blueprint trade. Uh, chase the trade. As well, right? Chase the trade is in, and I think that's it for right now, right? Anything I'm missing, guys? Am I missing anything here? I don't have all the uh, the lines and things on my chart. And I think that's pretty much it. ATO, right? ATO and 35. That's right, Chandra. That's right, exactly. The 
X5, that's right, X5 trade, absolutely, that's absolutely, okay. Remember on the at the open barrel, the at the open method, there is a, um, a, a part where if you don't get filled on the at the open, there's that second part of chase the trade. That's what the chase the trade is. Uh, for this trade entry, 35 quarter trailing stop or exit target. No, no, uh, this 35 quarter, you're out of the trade, so you're entering at the close of the second bar, 35 quarter, Dean. You're taking a point and a half based on the ATR, and you're out of the trade. So 13.35 quarter, a point and a half later, you're out. Now, if you wanted to trail a stop, obviously you could take a little bit more, but what I'm showing you is to be all in, all out, based on the current market conditions. Yep, you got it, Dean. Exactly. That's correct. Point and a half, because at the time, that's absolutely true. At the time when this trade occurred, it was at a point 1.55. See that? And that is why um, I, at the time, it's all I could think that the market can give me. So that's what I want you to take. Very good. Now I am starting a new class in February. Those of you who are interested and want to join up, please send me an email. You can find out more about it by visiting the website. Uh, another thing that I want to discuss with you guys today is when I look at price, you should interpret what you're seeing. And the way that I interpret what I'm seeing is really not by um, uh, indicators. Okay, I interpret what I see based on where price goes. And so as an example, if you have a situation where price is moving higher and higher and higher, most traders are thinking about where is the top and where am I going short. Okay. Instead, I want you to think about what this is demonstrating to you. It's demonstrating to you that the price is moving higher and higher and higher. And then you may see an example where the price at this point tries to go higher and tries and tries and tries and it's not going anywhere. Okay? Now when you see the market trying to go higher and it's not doing anything, you should a light bulb should turn on in your head and say we're not going anywhere. <laughs> it's trying to go somewhere, but it's definitely not going higher. And so if you're in a trade and you see the market trying to move higher and it's not by a certain number of bars, you can say to yourself, I need to exit this trade. Now, what I call this is called the yo-yo effect, where the market tries to move higher and can't. So for example, market tries to go higher like this and sellers step in and it's unable to move higher right the next bar comes in tries to go higher it can't sellers step in and stop it again it tries to go higher again and it can't and it's because sellers or the opposite push occurs if you're in a trade realize that it's yo-yoing trying to go higher and failing if you're about to enter into a trade long realize that it has to break whatever resistance before you go long. And so as a sign, look for when the market tries to go multiple times, like a yo-yo, tries to go uh, down and fails and pops back up, tries to go down and fails, pops back up, tries to go down and fails, pops back up. You should look at that as a forecaster to what's to come. Okay? Uh, yes, uh, sometimes you do have more than one trade. So right now I have this double bar long. I'm looking for a, a pullback trade or a, uh, or a strength trade. Uh, anyone here, Nathan, Frank, do you guys see here yet a pullback trade or a strength trade occur uh, for the Atlas line?
Not yet. Very good. Not yet. That's right. Exactly. So, um, not yet, but if it does occur, uh, then it's another opportunity to go long based on it being a pullback or strength, showing me strength. Okay. So yeah, if I usually put the first three or four trades up on the results page that occurred. I don't want to trade if this, it's listen, it's Friday. Um, if this falls down to one, I don't care what method you're trading, you guys really shouldn't be in the market uh, because you're just going to get cut up. Right, so it's falling towards that that uh, notion. Um, if it hits at one, and you're in a trade, I recommend everyone to stop. And it's Friday. On top of that, move to a different market, look at something else. But it's not the correct environment to be trading. Okay, we may have a strength trade here, right? May have a strength trade. You're setting up, right? To go long at 13.38 and whatever it is, this candle closes at. So, so if this candle closes green, that's an entry long. Okay. Anyone have any questions on the trading the news event here? If it possibly comes all the way down, the yo-yo effect where the market tries to go down and fails multiple times. Remember, it's a sign telling you that it's not ready or it can't do it and you, if you are hoping that it's going to continue um, I would say to you don't trade on hope right trade on what can actually occur and what does actually occur right Look at this dead just dead just died out here and you can see the relationship now this is this ATR that we're looking at is going lower and lower. There's nobody, tr you know. There's lot, a lot, much less um, volatility hitting these these bids and these asks. There's nothing really occurring here. Um, so if this candle closes, there's uh, what three minutes left, more or less, uh, to the green, to the long side, which it may. That's a long strength trade. Atlas line strength trade to go long. Okay. All right, so what are we looking at today? News event, Atlas line, uh, power price action trade here, possibly to the long side, right? Could possibly happen. All right, guys, don't dismiss it. Those of you who know how to how the power price action works, um, ATO. Let's take a look at what the ATO did this morning. long on the chase to trade right yeah that's most definitely going to be a long entry right here right there right right there right so there's the at the open software and that's the op at the open long right now. Right, guys, those of you who have the at the open, 1339.50 long. William, questions? Uh, you're referring to the this dash soft. It's uh, the software that comes with the at the open method, uh, William. So the at the open, you get a course that teaches you the method, and I also offer the software that that you can add to your chart. So, but I want you to learn how to do it manually. That the key is for you to understand how it works manually first, and then if you want to use the software, you can. Okay. Target, um, see here, point in point in a quarter would be 1339 50, 1340, 50, 1340 quarter, 1341, Dean, because it's below a point and a half. So you round down a point and a quarter. 
1340 quarter is your is your profit target based on the ATR. Okay, Dean. You're welcome. You're welcome, everyone. Stop is going to be um, two and a half points. good okay so if you're taking this as a strength trade the stop is going to be remember those of you who know the stop is right there right as a strength trade we saw strength it should go immediately to the long side if it's not your stop is going to be just under where it pivoted and turned around that's the strength trade stop. What second, guys, here? Chat, you took care of that email to Tom, correct? All right, thank you. All right, guys, uh, any questions? Uh, profit target is 1340 quarter. 13, I'm sorry, 13, 30, what is it? 13, 39, 50, 13, 40, 50, yeah, 13. I'm sorry, 1340.75, right? 1340.75, right there, is the profit target, right there. Now, I also put out a um, a blog post. Um, hopefully, you guys read it. I try to be a little bit informative in these posts, where there's a an action that almost every analyst in the field l looks at. At least when I worked uh, in the field we all looked at the January if it was a higher close than open alright and now to the, January just closed and I put the blog post down there saying if January closes higher than it opened the year is going to end up much higher than when it started and so I'm not saying that the entire year from now is going to go straight up, but I am saying that come December, we're going to be much higher, much, much higher than January. And much, much, maybe too much, too many muches, but it'll be higher than January. And that's how we used to look at forecasting future events in using price. Uh, the trades used to be taken and uh, you know all the managed accounts that we used to do used to be based on the January and then we would move forward into the year based on that it's one of the methods we used to do and there's plenty there's a lot but one of the methods we used to do so uh, I put out a blog post telling you that and prior before January even before January closed I said if January closes higher look for it to be a so if you want to do options if you want to buy the uh, the December e-mini S&P and hold on to it if you guys are looking to uh, capitalize on this event, it's a way to forecast where the year is going to wind, end up. And we may go lower in the summertime before it comes back up, absolutely. So look at pullbacks and things like that. But 
one thing is for certain, if you look at year after year after year, you can count on this to work. The other thing is years that end in five. You can go back all the way back to the 1800s, and we did. We were very heavily into analysis of price. And if you go back 150 years, every year since the stock market opened, it used to be the cash market before it turned into futures. In the cash market, rolling over to futures, um, every year ending in a five was a bullish year. Every single year, it's never failed. So it's 100% accuracy out of all the data that we have. So look at uh, in the year 2015. I know it's it's premature, but it's something that I. I remembered when I was writing the blog post a little bit of information for you a swing I a question here is how is the stop configured uh, Dean um, and it's an election year uh, yeah but you know uh, you have a good point it's an election year but I didn't you know, besides it being an election year, right? Besides it being an election year, uh, it's not because it's an election year. It's mainly because uh, the January sets off the tone for the year, regardless if it's an election year or not. Now, and on top of it, and on top of it, it's an election year. So, which means the market will typically uh, rally anyway when it's an election year. So, I agree with that, PK. Now, this uh, stop here, how, what is it based on? It's based on the market. Uh, pivoting and there's no EMAs or anything like that it's pivoting down let me see if I can put here the lines here it's pivoting down and turned around that's why I have it a couple ticks under where it pivoted like that that's why I put my stop there that's the that's the reason why I do it uh, I forgot who asked that question Daniel was it I think or Dean uh, Dean uh, so it, it's based on the the price coming down, showing me strength. It should not come down to here, and if it does, I want to get out of the trade. All right, it should rally and continue rallying. That's the reason. Okay. Yeah, two ticks, Dean. I think that that's the that's the the correct way to do it. You got it, Dean. No worries, uh, PK. No worries. Not to worry. All right. So I want everyone to have a, a good weekend. I'm going to wrap this up. If you're interested in the upcoming February class, February 13th, um, please let me know. I still have um, plenty of spaces available. I try to keep it to a minimum. I like to have the interaction with a small group. So I still have plenty of room available if you're interested in starting uh, February 13th. It's eight weeks with me. I record everything. I provide all the software, all the courses, and I have a, a support staff who uh, helps you out with all the installs and and everything. All right, Sam, you're welcome. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, and I'll have another another webinar next week, Thursday or Friday, and we'll go over a couple of di different topics. But hopefully, I give you a little insight on how I look at the market, how I trade the market, and looking at price. And please do me a favor: um, avoid using indicators solely to trade. They are lagging, all right? And so that's what I, I want to bring to the table. Avoid lo looking at conventional indicators. You're welcome, everyone. Have a good weekend. You got it, Burrell. Me too. Burrell, I'll send you an email right after, right after um, the, the webinar, okay? Great. Bye-bye now.